degrees inside and three degrees outside. So I told Ethan, Ethan and I, we talked, and I'm going to try to make a short version here, but the church, where they go to church at, had just completed a life, family life center, and so they opened it up to all people, the church, uh, if they wanted to come over and get showers, or they had electricity there. showers, they had fixed chili and had coffee and all kinds of things. So we went over there and ate chili and fellowshiped and <clears throat> met the pastor and talked to him for a little bit. And we just sat around and talked, fellowship for a little while. And then one family offered to put us up in a hotel for one night at least. They said they could do that. They didn't know if they'd be able to after that. Not that they wouldn't. It's just that the hotel reservations was only limited. It was limited to at least one night. And so this family opened up their home to us. And the scripture I just read to you is what the husband told me. It kept ringing in his heart, ringing in his mind. I want you to understand that his wife's daddy, they were there in the home. And he had cancer. And so they were hesitant about letting us in. My, my, my wife and I, and Ethan and Kaylee and, and Everly, they were hesitant about letting us in. But the husband told me, he said, Acts chapter 4, verse 32, kept ringing in his heart, ringing in his mind. He said, so the, but listen, when God does things, he does things well. <laughs> because this family, Miss Jackie, I mean, it's like it's a, it, we had known them all our life. It was, it was just one of those God things. Well, your spirit bear witness, you're a child of God. I mean, they loved the Lord. They loved each the, the I was, <laughs> he addressed me as Pastor Brown, his wife. And they had two teenage children. One was 19, one was 17, and they, Pastor Brown, and Miss Gail, <laughs> that's why they addressed us. And the whole time we was there, they wouldn't let us do nothing. Wouldn't eat, let Ethan and Kaylee do anything. We'd try to offer to buy some food, whatever. You are a, our guest. And they would not leave and let Gail wash a dish, if you will. Would not let us do anything. Precious family. They were from the Tongo region. Pray for them. They're going to be taking her daddy and mom back to, they're originally from Canada. That's where her mom and daddy live. And they have to go back every six months. He came down in November, I think it was November, and it's because of cancer. But anyway, um, they have to go back, I think it's April. But the Canadian government, if you are a Canadian citizen and you've been to the United States, they will take you and put you in a van and haul you off to an undisclosed location to test you if you're positive or negative for COVID. If you're positive, you stay in an undisclosed location for at least two weeks. They will not even tell your family where you're at. So they're, they have not taken her daddy back because of that very reason. But you have to go back due to the requirements. They have to go back to Canada one, for, if it's just for, for one day every six months. So do pray for them. She's stressing big time over the thought that they would take her daddy and her mama and take them away. Imagine that. Is that Germany? Is, that, is this North America? Is this, or is this over in the Gulag, Russia? KGB? Huh. Imagine that. They come and take your loved one. Don't tell you where they're taking them. And for two weeks, 
you have no idea where they're at or how they're even being treated. I shared with Brother Steve, there's a pastor in Canada, in, in Edmonton, Canada, was arrested the other day for no other reason but for preaching the gospel, for having a worship service in his church. Because they have a lockdown in Canada, but his people, his church, decided it was time to get back to worshiping God collectively. And so they met and they arrested him. They hauled him off in shackles, hand, feet, and waist. Like a <laughs> and they have refused to let his wife or his children see him. And they told him that they would release him. They would release him if he would no longer preach. You see, that's, that's 1930s, 40s, 50s. German, Nazi. No, this is 2021. They told him if they would release him, he's supposed to have went to court today for a hearing of, about whether he's going to be released till his trial or be kept in jail until his trial. I don't know how the outcome of that went. I've not heard. Can you imagine that? Being told, if you'll just stop preaching, you can go home. He, he, he preached a very thoughtful, very powerful message on Romans chapter 13 about the civil government. It's ordained by God. <laughs> and if the government would run as if they were ordered by God, there'd be no abortions in America. That's absolutely right. If they, if they ruled in the fear of God, there would be none of this stuff that's going on in our nation. There would be none of this that they think they're in charge, they're in control. <laughs> but I, have, I am so grateful and thankful that Gail and, my, and I were able to meet this precious family, stay in their home for six days. Ethan and Kaylee on their own, are on their way here. They were not going to come until mid-March sometime. March, middle of March, something like that, he thought. But due to all the things that's happening, they, they didn't have electricity Sunday afternoon. They finally came back on, I think, about 5 o'clock their time, 6 o'clock our time. But they have, no, they have no hot water. They had water, but no hot water. And so they just decided to load up and come home for a, few, a couple of weeks at least. So let's just continually pray for them. Pray for that family. We, uh, Lord knows who they are. Uh, pray for that dad and cancer. And, uh, I just want to share with you, I thought I'd share with you for a few minutes here, how good God has been to, been to us. It was powerful. It was, it was just like, I mean, it's like we had known them all our life, Brother Terry. It was just God sin. It's just like we'd, we'd been together. We'd, we were family. We'd known each other all our life, Brother Tom. We laughed. We joked. We fellowship. We'd set up 12, 30, 1 o'clock talking. Now, you got to imagine it's their time, but it's 2 o'clock our time. Because, <laughs> you know, but that's just one of those God things. And, and, and I've got, you know, I know people prayed and, Text and I got phone calls. We did. I know Miss uh, Miss Sanders. She called Gail and told told us yesterday that she had had. She's calling everybody she could to pray for her preacher <laughs> and Miss Gail, Ethan, and Kaylee. The whole family's in situations down there. It's pretty rough at times. There's parts of Texas, Fort Worth. They were without power for days. Homes. The home we stayed in, it was intermediate. It was on for an hour, off for an hour, on for an hour, off for an hour. They had a 
generator. So they allowed us to, you know, they, was, they hadn't started it up and it's right now if they would run it. And then it came on, it stayed on about three hours, and went off for about an hour. Then it came on, stayed on about four hours, went off about an hour. And then it came on and stayed on. So it's just, uh, anything you want to add, Mom? Anything? <laughs> I was just trying to think. Well, I've, I've uh, covered uh, everything. It was powerful, folks. The way God, what God did, how God took care of us. I appreciate your prayers, your thoughts, your concerns for us. Um, do remember Miss Tony Branch? I talked to her this evening, and she's still down weather with this virus stuff and she told me that David had it now so just continue to pray for them she said Justin's fine he's okay and uh, just continue to pray for them I was trying to think if there's any, anyone else I may need to mention here this evening anybody else got anything oh yeah my aunt Shirley my daddy's sister uh, <clears throat> Not, she's got some health issues, okay, but she's not really doing well, not doing good at all. And, I mean, she may be here a, month, a week from now. She may be here, may leave here tomorrow. I don't know. It's in God's hands. And our daughter-in-law, Morgan, her grandma, Martha, fell and broke her hip. She's in surgery right now. So just continually pray for that family, for that need. Anyone else? Miss Donna? Jason Ramsey had hip replacement surgery. I tried to get a hold of Miss Pat because that's where Jason was staying at Miss uh, Wayne. But I talked to Pat yesterday and she said he was doing well. He was at Baptist when it, where he, that's where he had his surgery and that he was doing okay. And he said she she told me yesterday he should get to go home today because he was up walking after the surgery. So, but I tried to get a hold of her this evening. Busy phone. <laughs> they have a, their house on, so busy, busy, busy. So I just wanted to get, you know, try not to talk to them. Miss George, you have. Just a 
better in person than it ever been a couple weeks ago, and it's just not the same person. You know, I would like to uh, pray for her because she's in a bad way. I don't know it really personally, but I know her family is going to be able to pray and help her out. Sure. Anyone else? They're traveling back from Florida. I think that's right. They're on their way back. Ms. Sheila, do you have a... Okay. Anybody else? Anyone? My um, blessing is so good. I'm blessed with her for last week. She had COVID until last week. Um, I told you guys they had extubated her and took off her house. She was doing well. They ended up having to re-intubate her, and she passed last week. Oh, wow. So her husband passed away, and she has two kids from my age. an officer killed and Ethan knew down in Dallas, Texas. They worked in the same district. Uh, the officer was directing traffic at an accident and a drunk driver rear-ended his police car and, his, and the police car hit him. Now, what happened, the officer was down but no one came in. It wasn't, you know, it's just a mix communication, okay? Mix up in communication. Because when they realized he was down, it had been several minutes since when he was not down. He was 27 years old, left behind a wife, had a, expecting a child and had, had a little boy. And so Ethan was part of the procession <coughs> this past Monday for that. else. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Let's ask God to help us. Continue to pray for our nation, our country. Pray for the each and every one. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace and mercy, we're truly thankful for another blessed privilege, Lord, that you've given us to be able to come and pray. What an opportunity you've given us, Lord, how you took care of us, Heavenly Father. I cannot thank you enough. You were so gracious and so kind, so undeserving, but yet you looked after us. You took care of us, and I'm thankful for that, Heavenly Father, that we have a home, a church home, a church family. Lord, I'm grateful for my church family. Lord, where would we be without that family tonight? I pray, God, that you would help that family that took care of us, Lord. You'd open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon them, minister to them, meet every need they may have. I pray for their, for her dad, for Anita's dad. I pray, God, that you would help uh, her dad in that situation with the cancer. Praying, God, you'd help her mom in this situation about going back to Canada. I pray, God, you'd help and work in that situation. God, you're able to do these things. And so, Lord, we humbly bow before you, asking of you, Heavenly Father, to please help us. Help this home and this family. Lord, you surely are gracious and kind to us. I pray, God, that you might help each and every spoken request of prayer here tonight, Lord, that was mentioned in this place. God, would you speak to hearts, those that are in need of physical needs. I pray, God, you might comfort them. You are the great physician. You are the great I am. And, and Lord, we do pray for this one that passed uh, due to this virus, God. This uh, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd help that home and family, God. Please comfort them, minister to them. God, I want to thank you most of all for a place called heaven. Lord, that one day, someday, 
that day when we will all gather to a place of no more, a place of no more sorrow, no more party, no more death, no more pain or suffering. God, I want to thank you that you've given us that place, Lord, a place of comfort. And Lord, here is another place, this place, God, that you've given us on this side of eternity, Lord, where we can come and share our burdens. Uh, Lord, we can ask of you to help us in and, and the time of need and bring our cares, our concerns. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd help each and every home that's here tonight, God. And pray, God, that you might speak to their hearts and minister to their soul and help them, Heavenly Father, even tonight, God. Please, would you help this church continually to grow and glow for your glory, Heavenly Father. Please, God, we need a touch on you. We're thankful for the precious, precious souls that were saved and what you did a couple of weeks ago, God, and how you ministered to our souls and how you spoke to our hearts and how we see precious souls saved by the good grace and mercy of God. And thankful, Heavenly Father, tonight for what you did and, and for what you're going to do, continually do here in this place. And thank you for your presence, for your power. Praying God should help each and every home and family once again tonight, God. Please, Heavenly Father, we need you and we need a touch from you. God, would you help uh, Ethan and Kaylee as they travel, Lord? Uh, please, God, keep them safe and uh, help them to arrive safely, God. We're asking of you, Heavenly Father, believing in you by faith, God. And would you help those families, Lord, that officer that passed away, God, there in Dallas. And, his wife and his son, and, and they're expecting another one. God, I pray, the God of all comfort, the God of all grace would minister to them and help them, Heavenly Father, please. God, would you help us? God, we need your help. I'm helpless, Lord, tonight. I need your help tonight, God, please. Help us, Lord, once again in this place. God, please speak to our hearts and minister to our souls. God, please open up your word. Lord, your word would mean speak to our hearts tonight. And you would help us and you and afresh as we gather together, assemble ourselves here. And thank you for your precious word that speaks to our hearts. And oh, God, would you bring comfort to us tonight? You are the great comforter. And so, God, we look to you tonight to, to minister to hearts and lives. Uh, please, God, uh, help these homes and families uh, that have burdens uh, on their heart. God, uh, please, Heavenly Father, would you speak to their heart. Uh, thank you for what you're going to do through your precious word, uh, even here tonight, Father. We want to thank you and praise you, give you the glory for what you do, and we'll give you the praise and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Looks like she might be here soon. Yes, sir. Don't let her ask you. Miss Jordan, are you going to say anything? Amen.
chapter 14, Proverbs 14. We'll look at one little verse here tonight, Proverbs 14. <clears throat> As we were preparing to leave to go down there, listen, my wife didn't know, but then she found out. Yeah. I had, see, I have Three hundred thousand plus miles with Delta because of all the traveling I've done, and I got a Sky Miles thing and all this, and so I'm able to get upgrades, and and so I wasn't going to tell someone that I had upgraded us to first class all the way down there and all the way back. Well, our son Ethan calls us, FaceTime about coming down. And then he goes, Daddy, did you upgrade Mama? I said, I just looked at him. I'm like, you know, stern look, you know. I'm like, you know. And he said, well, Daddy, is Mama not worth it? Do you not love Mama? Do you not love Mama, Daddy? I said, son. He said, well, Daddy, did you upgrade Mama to first class? He said, is she not worth it? I said, boy. He said, well, did you? And I can't lie, you know. I mean, I said, yes. And she said so far, did you? <laughs> I said, yes, I did. But I said, I wasn't going to tell you until you we boarded the plane, you know. I wasn't going to tell her until we got ready to get on the plane or get, get back there to the plane. But yeah, that boy of mine, he, do you love mama, daddy? Is she not worth it? Yeah. Uh, son, okay, all right, you know, but 
But we had uh, a good time. We, you know, the flight was great. No problems with that. Flew from Atlanta. I mean, from well, from Charlotte to Detroit, Detroit to Dallas, and then from on the way back we flew from Dallas to uh, Atlanta. From Atlanta we had a lay layover in two hours in Atlanta. Well, really two and a half. Well, two hours, might as well say, because we boarded the plane. We landed at seven thirty, boarded the plane at nine thirty, didn't take off till seven to ten. So. Yeah, they, Atlanta was full. The flights to Atlanta were full. From Charlotte to Atlanta, I had to go from Atlanta, I mean from Charlotte to Detroit. Had an hour and a half lay, layover, and then from Detroit to Dallas. That's a new short trip they got. Yeah. <laughs> now they flew me one time because Atlanta airport was closed down, shut down due to snow. But they also, they upgraded me to first class because they, they had to fly me from uh, uh, Charlotte to Detroit, but from Detroit to all the way down to Sao Paulo, Brazil. So I was upgraded to first class because they could not get me to Atlanta, then from Atlanta to Sao Paulo, Brazil. So anyway, it is what it is. <laughs> Do remember Miss Ruby Sizemore, uh, pray for that family. Brother Bobby, you know, as you know, that he passed away in 2019, February the 28th. His birthday was February the 20th. And so uh, I talked to Miss Ruby, just continually pray for that family. They sure are missing their daddy. And she sure is missing Brother Bob. And uh, just continually pray for that family, as you will. Proverbs chapter 14, it says, Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Well, that's the crowd we're looking at today, 2021. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Proverbs 14, verse number 4, Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. In other words, you work, you labor, the ox will take care of you and himself as well. But verse number 5, A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth it not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You need to pay attention to who you're hanging around with. Amen. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin. Boy, do we ever see that so prevalently in our society today? Is this not 2021? Is this what we're reading here, 2021? But among the righteous, there is favor. Wow. God showed us favor. He didn't have to, but he sure did last week. He surely smiled on us. Let us stay in a home, a family. You would have not known that this individual, this husband, is a West Point graduate. You would not have known that he has a Master's of Science from Stanford University. You would not have known, Brother Todd, that he was a, over 15 managers and 895 employees. He would not have known that, Miss Sheila. Because we didn't talk about those things. We talked about the Lord this time. And his love for Jesus. He works from his home. He does not even have to go anywhere. You would not have known those things. I mean, can 
you ever had some? He was a captain in the army. He served in Iraq. But you would have never known those things. I would not have known it if I had not seen it. <laughs> Humble, good family that loves the Lord. And most of all, I'm thankful and grateful that they loved my family. They thought the world of Ethan and Kaylee. That just blessed my soul. They said, you have a fine young man. And we sure do love him. Him and his wife. I said, glory to God. Let me read that again. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. See what God will do for you? I just purposed in my heart as a 25-year-old that I was going to live for God and serve Jesus. I just determined in my soul that that's what I was going to do. Whether anyone else will or won't, does or don't, I am. Reaped the benefit of that the other day when a man and his wife and his family invited us into their home. He said, I may contact you from time to time just to, he said, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. He said, I may need you to pray for me about some things and situations. He said, I may contact you from time to time just, just to let you know to pray for me. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intimidate, intermingle with his joy. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Wow. <laughs> Is that not powerful? Do you not see what's happening in our nation, our country, in our, in our cultural it is systematic racism, cancel culture, wokeness, and all this mess that's going on around and about us. But you see, the scriptures tells us, lets us know, as a body of believers, as believers in the faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, notice what it says, the house of the wicked shall be overthrown, <laughs> but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Huh. That means that could be the t your tabernacle in which you live in. It could be the t this, this place right here. God has a plan and a purpose even for this place. Amen. This place is going to flourish. Why? Because God said it would. God said it will. And I just believe God. He's done showed me that he, he showed me that he's going to take care of us. More ways than one. Not just the trip to Dallas. Not just that, but I, I, I've, I've been through, if you will, well, the old song, I've been through enough to know that he can, that he's able. There is a way that seemeth right. Notice this, verse number 12. There is a way that which seemeth right unto man, unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. My, my. Well, you know, the tragic end. You know, people can be sincere in their religion and miss the Savior in all things. There are a lot of religious people, a lot of sincere people, in their religion, but they have no relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They can be sincere, but it does not acknowledge, you, you, sincerity is one thing, but acknowledging you are a sinner is another. Amen? People are sincere. They are sincere. People that are sincere. <laughs> but there's not conviction for sin. 
There's no repentance of sin. He was asking me while we were down there, we got to talking about me being a chaplain and stuff. And another family came over and visited with them and that knew them well and knew Ethan and Kaylee well. And, and they were visiting with us and he got to talking to me. And I don't know what he is, some executive something, I guess, because uh, anyway, he, he's talking to me about the chaplaincy and different things. And I was telling him, I said, you know, a lot of people get, they're, they're sorry that they got caught, not sorry that they've sinned. And he goes, oh, wow. He said, that's good. He said, that's the society we're living in, the culture that we're living in. Not forsaking one's sin. Forsaking it, turning it away, letting go of it, dying to self. We have to die to these things. You may be, be, be sincere, but you're going to miss heaven. You may be sincere in your, in your religiosity. You may be sincere uh, in your moral ethics, but you are going to die without Christ, without hope, without God. Because you have never truly repented and asked Christ into your life. You'll die without him, without God. Because Christ is not in your life. There are a lot of sincere people, but they do not know the Savior. Huh. Think about the rich young ruler. He was moral in all his obligations, his duties. He says, these things I have kept since my youth. But he's still going to die. <laughs> Think about it. The Pharisees. I was listening to Brother Brian. and I hope you all were blessed by him. He was, a, he was a fine young man. I think a lot of him. And I think he shared with you all about. See, I was preaching one night at the church he attends. And he surrendered to preach the gospel that night. So you see, I've got some fruit that's going to remain. Even though I may be gone one day, I may, I may pass from this life to the next, but I'm still going to have some fruit that remains. I'm still going to have a, a Brian Curley that's going to stand and preach the glorious gospel. I was listening to him, he was talking about the pitcher, you know, talking about Paul. He was a tent maker. You know, I heard him say he was a tent maker. He, he, he could have been a rich man. He was a Pharisee. He could have been in the higher of echelons in the, in the category of the synagogue. He was Saul of Tarsus, trained under the feet of Gamil. He could, have, he could have been a very prominent Pharisee. But God. I think about my own life right there. I've thought about that sometimes, but even before Brian preached, uh, that message, that thought, this, it just resonated in my heart, my mind. I, I don't know what it did to you, but it, it, I, I thought about my life. and uh, I, I had plans. I had this, this is what I wanted. This is what I desired. This is what I wanted to do. But then God came by. And he, he, he changed everything. He rearranged everything. And I let him. I let go of who I was. I died to who I, what I wanted. And let God have his way. I'm still dying to that. Holy Ghost University is still working on me. HG 101, I'm still taking that class. I'll never, and you never will either, graduate from that class. If you're a born again child of God, the Holy Ghost University is going to work in your life. It's called sanctification. God is going to work on you. That's why I've said it from the pulpit many times. Folks, listen, I pray for you. I love you. I'll do what I can for you. But listen, it comes down to you and God. If you don't want to do what God wants, he'll deal with you. 
He'll do more for me, do, do more for you, for you than I ever could. Because if I try to do something for you, I'm going to mess it up just as sure as the world. But the Holy Ghost of God gets a hold of your heart and speaks to your soul, wakes you up in the middle of the night and says, what are you going to do about that sin? What are you going to do about that thing in your life? Why won't you give me your life? See, the Holy Ghost of God will wake you up. He did. How do I know? He did it to me. If you're truly a child of God, he's going to wake you up. He's going to bother you. Holy Ghost of God is going to visit you. You can't outrun him. You can't hide from him. You can't go nowhere if you're a child of God. Ah, oh, consider the ways. Consider those that think they're right. Sincerity. That will not get you into heaven. Uh-uh. Guess what? Church membership will not get you into heaven. Have you ever heard the old saying, I'm sure you can't go home on mama's coattails, can't go to heaven on mama's coattails? You can't. Just because grandma was a Christian does, make, does not make you one. You cannot go to heaven because grandpa was. Uh-uh. You have to come to the own truth, the own realization that you and you and yourself in your own life, your own person, that you need Christ. I can't give you what I've got. I can't give you that peace, that joy. I hope you see that, that you might want it. <laughs> it's up to you. Well, there's many that they, they think they're right. There's many that think they're right, but they're wrong. They, they think they're okay in their religiosity, their religious uh, platforms, their religious code of ethics, if you will, their, their religious moral uh, code, if you will, sacraments. This gentleman that we stayed with, he told me he was raised a Catholic. But he said, then one day, I see myself as a lost man needing Christ. Needing Christ. And that was the day he became a born-again Christian. There's a lot of sincere people in their religiosity. In the Tongo Islands, the Tongos in the South Pacific, it was founded and a lot of uh, different uh, denominations have settled there in that area, but he said it, he, he hated it. It's sad for his people because the Mormons are coming in and taking over. And he's trying to tell as many people as he can in his nation, his country, that they're wrong. Huh. The tragic end of a sincere man. You know, the tragic end of any sincere man is he's going to step out into eternity unprepared to meet God. Unprepared. So while on this side of eternity, under the sound of my voice, why not make preparations? Why not get it settled in your heart, your soul, that you know in whom and what you believe in, that you're a child of God, you've been born again, birthed into the family of God, if you will, some of the terminology that people use. But I'm saying in your own heart, your own soul, work out your own salvation with much fear and trembling. Are you saved? Examine yourself, whether you be in the faith or not. Prove your own self, whether Christ liveth in you, except you be a reprobate of an ungodly mind. You've crossed the line. Huh. Man is spiritually dead anyway. I'm not a Calvinist. I do not preach Calvinism. I do not believe in that. I am a whosoever will gospel preacher. I am by grace through faith. Amen. Hello. Amen. I hope you are too. <laughs> Amen. The elect sake, God chose the nation of Israel to bring forth his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how he, the election works. He didn't elect a, a baby, choose that baby. Could you, you may, 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 
You know, y'all seen my wife singing, God is so good to Everly. Could you imagine? Could you, you know, the, 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 think about that for just a moment. Could you imagine that my wife is singing, God is so good to little Everly? But according to the Calvinists, she could, God, you know, she's either born to heaven or born to hell. She's going to live one, she's going, huh? Predestination. Predetermined, the foreknowledge of God. Yes, God does know whom will be saved, but God gives man that alternative. He gives man that choice. Through the preaching of the gospel, God gives man that choice. But you, could you imagine a little Everly huh, having no hope? Predetermined, Brother Kevin, that she would not even have that blessed privilege of ever, ever, ever knowing Christ. Is that ludicrousy? Is that not crazy? To think that little Everly, you know what, I was holding her. You know what I was thinking? I was saying to myself, I was saying to myself, I was saying, to, I was whispering a little prayer over her. I said, God, someday, someday, God, in your mercy and your grace, would you speak to her soul, woo her and draw her to your saving grace and knowledge of your knowledge, Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that she too may know the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, our Savior. He's my Savior. Is he yours? I'm glad he's mine. Amen. My, my, my. There's a lot of folks sincere, but they're spiritually dead. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Huh? <laughs> For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.23. Romans 5, 8, but God commit his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Oh, my, my. Spiritually dead. Huh. Oh, they're sincere, but they're dead. You know what awaits that man that's sincere? Oh, he's religious, moral, ethically, but he's lost. I still think about the man that I witnessed to laying on his deathbed, if you will, in a hospital. I still runs in my heart, still runs in my mind. I still remember his sister telling me. I still hear her sometimes from time to time. I still hear her telling me he's 66 years old. He's a good man. Do anything for anybody. Then she looks at me and she says, but he's lost. He's never had a time nor place in his life. He's trusted Christ as his Savior. He's lost. And I remember going to that hospital room and looking at that individual and talking to him. He was looking at the ceiling, wouldn't even look at me. And I said, but sir, you have to understand, I was at home and God burdened my heart to come witness to you. I said, sir, wouldn't you like to know if you died today, you'd go to heaven? And I could still hear him saying, I believe I will. And he stuck out his hand and he prayed and he asked God to forgive him and save him. And that Monday morning while putting the spoon to his mouth, eating breakfast, gone, stepped out into eternity forever. I remember going to the funeral home and seeing that sister weeping and crying, thinking her brother died and went to that awful place. But I had the, I, I was able to tell her, no. He went to heaven, he prayed and asked God to forgive him and save him. I was there, I heard him. <laughs> wow, <laughs> what God did. Oh, he was sincere. He could have died lost, but the Holy Ghost of God would not leave me alone until I went and talked to that man. 
And because I was obedient to that, obedient to his, his urging, his nudge, if you will, whatever, how you want to say it, because I was obedient to what God would have me do, that man is in heaven now. God gave him an opportunity to be saved. He could have refused. He could have rejected. But no, he received the Lord Jesus Christ in his heart and life. And now he's in eternity forever. Heaven. Heaven. Where will you spend eternity? Huh? <laughs> hey, the scripture does not expect you to be, yeah, I mean, I understand sincere about our faith, yes. But the scripture challenges us to repent and trust Christ as our Savior. Well, uh, excuse me, Proverbs 14, verse number 12. There is a way that which seemeth right. There is a way that which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Let me ask you, which way you want to live? How do you want to go? Where do you want to go? Where do you want to spend eternity? Huh? It's up to you. God has made himself available through his darling son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you live righteously in this present wicked, ungodly world, I assure you, as, Rome, as Galatians 6 and 9 says, do not grow weary in well-doing. You shall reap. You shall reap if you faint not. I assure you, just as if we were at that home last week there, we were reaping the benefits of living for God and serving Jesus. With my family, my children, my son and my daughter-in-law, Kaylee, they're, they're reaping the benefits of serving God, living for Jesus. My son, I can still hear him calling me and say, Daddy, I found me a church. He said, I, I told you I'd find me a good Bible-believing, preaching, practicing church when I got down here. He said, I found one. He said, I joined it. He's a member there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bless my soul. He's reaping the benefits because he decided to live for God. He's trusted in the Lord. How about you tonight? Where are you at? How about your walk with the Lord? Where are you at? Huh? Who are you living for? What are you serving? Let's stand. Well, I could go on and on. My heart's full tonight. Huh. I'm just being blessed up here. Just, just the favor of God. Just the good favor of God on my life. Just the blessings of the Lord. Just enjoying the blessings of an almighty God. You know, it started when I was 25 years old. I've just stayed with the stuff, just stayed with him. Purpose in my heart, I was going to live for God, serve Jesus. And my children are reaping the benefits. My sons and daughters I, I, I reap the benefits of had lived for God, serve Jesus. They could see that favor. I know they see. Huh. My, my, my. Father in heaven, I truly thankful for this opportunity to be back behind this pulpit once again, declaring the unsearchable riches of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, declaring unto a congregation, a body of believers, Lord, oh, they may be sincere, but they know not the Savior. There's a world out there that is sincere about their religiosity, but they know not the Savior. Even those that may be listening, God, I, I know that you know the heart of every individual. 
But God, even here tonight, maybe there's someone here in this place, in this, in this congregation here tonight, where they've been sincere, but they know not Jesus. God, there's a reason for the message tonight. There's a purpose, a plan that you have in this. And God, I'm just the vessel of clay, just willing to be an instrument used of you, just to be a messenger delivering the, your word here tonight. And Father, I want to thank you for favor. <laughs> oh God, you've been so good to me. Looking back through the years, the tears, the trials, the troubles, all things work for good to them that love God and called according to his purpose. Romans 8, 28. You're here tonight, God. You've blessed us with your presence once again. It's so good to be back here behind this pulpit. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd help this church continually to press forward toward the prize and the mark, the prize of high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Help us, Heavenly Father, continue the fight. Thank you for loving us, for saving us, for all you do for us. In Jesus' name. You some here, here tonight, you need to come to this altar, you got a need in your life, whatever the need may be, won't you come? Won't you come? As we sing, brother. I found favor. God will give you favor. You must be born again. John 3, 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see. He shall not see. You will never see. Heaven. Appreciate you being here tonight. Is there a word or announcement or anything before we're dismissed? Anybody? Anyone? Appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you, good Lord, for your presence. Ask Brother Steve if he will dismiss us in prayer. Father, we do thank you, Father, again for the privilege and opportunity to be here tonight, Father. We thank you for your love, the love that you display through your son, Jesus Christ, when you died on the cross for our sins. Amen. God bless you. I love you.